right, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. You know, one of the favorite things that I always like finding on the internet from other YouTube creators or Twitter is the dating coaches, the red pill dating coaches that want to tell you how to meet women. And even they admit that using dating apps is a dead end, that you, there's just no way you can show yourself as a high enough value male uh, just by a profile alone, unless you look like, you know, a superhero slash rock star standing in front of a Bugatti, you're six foot three, muscular and very good looking. So what are guys supposed to do? Well, these red pill coaches tell you, go on out there and it's called, uh, you know, doing day game. Go out and talk to women during the day. Introduce yourself, get to know them. They'll see you're a high quality value male and then they'll, I don't know, be interested in you. But what happens when just the idea of you talking to somebody gets people nervous, gets their hair up? Uh Uh-oh, he could be a creep. This obviously is a stranger talking to a woman, and we have to white knight for her. This is a story from uh, uh, the New York Post. Starbucks barista's secret note on a cup to help A young woman sparks heated debate. What are men supposed to do? Uh, So this gal, uh, I guess this guy was talking to her, and I'll read the story here, but, you know, the TLDR is uh, uh, the barista saw this guy that obviously was unknown to this woman talking to her, and he puts a note on there that, like, if you need help, send me a signal, and we'll white knight and rescue you. And it's kind of like, you know, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you a story here real quick. I don't have any news stories or anything attached to it. I remember reading a story where a man was walking two children across a parking lot and a woman got very concerned because the kids had ice cream and he was walking them towards a vehicle. So she called the police and the police showed up and they wanted to know why this man was walking with two children. Why were you going to the car, sir? And he said, he turned to set and said to them, they're my kids. When did it become so dangerous and so scary that men walking with their own kids alone without a mother? Have have we really gone there as a society? And the answer is yes. Do you know on a lot of flights, if you have booked a seat and uh, kids are flying without their parents, do you know as a man, you can't sit next to them? Oftentimes, they will will make you or the kids move seats because you're not allowed to sit next to them because you could be a horrible creeper. This is how men are being, I don't know, seen in society now, where just our very existence were probably creepy weirdos. I mean, that's really what they're doing. They say here, Starbucks barista's secret note on a cup for a young female customer offering to intervene after a man started talking to her, has generated heat, heated debates online. Texas woman Brandy Salim Robertson first shared the story in a viral Facebook post last year. Now, this is going in the rounds on Twitter. That's why it got picked up very uh, recently here. She praised the employee for stepping in when her 18-year-old daughter was approached by a man she didn't know while studying by herself at a Corpus Christi location. So here's an 18-year-old. Now, we don't know the age of the man, but he might've been 25. He might've been 28. Uh, He might not have known she was 18 and thought she was 22. We don't know these things. Men out in the wild don't know these things. He saw what he thought was a young woman who was attractive. And he said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to try some of my day game, or I'm going to talk to her, or I hope to get her phone number. And all of a sudden that scene is like, Oh, you got to save her. The message on the cup read, are you okay? Do you want us to intervene? If you do, take the lid off the cup. Robertson wrote in the caption, my 18-year-old daughter was at Starbucks alone the other night. A man came up to her and started talking to her. A barista handed her an extra hot chocolate someone forgot to pick up. And this is the message on the cup. Now, not only is that bad enough, but then you get all the responses to it that were on Twitter. Um, She says, how grateful I am for people who look out for other people. Side note, She felt safe and did not remove the lid, but let them know. She said the whole team was watching over her the rest of the time she was there. Thank you, Starbucks, for having a great team. The guy didn't do anything wrong. She didn't mind him talking because she didn't take the lid off the coffee cup. 
So this this is a whole to do about a just about just a guy like maybe chatting her up a little bit, seeing if she's single or maybe getting a phone number. At the time, the man was very loud and animated. Uh, uh, at the time, Robertson said, "Okay, so which is Robertson? Is that the mother?" Yes. Roberts, Robertson is the mother, and she wrote in the caption, my 18-year-old Starbucks, or my 18-year-old daughter was at Starbucks alone. Okay, so how does Robertson know that the man was very loud and animated? Did the daughter say that? But the daughter wasn't worried. She didn't take the cup off anything. This is why I'm a little confused. The man was very loud and animated. She looked up and saw a row of baristas staring at her ready to step in. This reaffirms my faith in humanity. Maybe just seeing others, uh, this story, others given the opportunity to say something or turn away, they would say something. The story and photo have gone viral again online after being shared on X, formerly Twitter, by the account Call to Activism. And they say, this gave me goosebumps. And they share the story. Well, the daughter obviously took the photo. And she shared it with mom. And mom decides I'm going to get, I don't know, award points on the internet for sharing it. Uh, the 20, in 2021, uh, a Florida bartender went viral for handing a similar note disguised as a receipt to two women who are being hit on by a creepy customer. How do, define creepy. Well, it was a man by himself talking to women. Is that what, what defines creepy now? The note said, if this guy's bothering you, put your ponytail on your other shoulder and I will have him removed. He's giving me the creeps, says the bartender's note. Well, since when is it up to you to worry about what the woman that's being talked to thinks? Because here's the thing. Obviously, the bartender's watching. Now, if the woman says, uh, please get away from me, I'm not interested, and the guy says, no, I, hey, baby, then the bartender could do something because they're obviously paying attention. But since, since when, this is like the fat friend that comes up and says, my girlfriend's not interested in talking to you at the bar because she's not getting into any attention. That's what this feels like. Uh, many users praise the reported actions of the Starbucks staff. As a father of a daughter, I'm glad people are still looking out, one, note, uh, one wrote. Another said in today's society, more people should be proactive like this. You just never know what a situation really is. Uh, kudos uh, to the alert Starbucks staff, never be silent and always ask. So anytime a male talks to a female and they're not sure what's going on, everybody needs to stop and start paying attention and staring at this young guy who maybe just wants to talk to a gal or get her phone number or flirt. You know how most of civilization has decided to meet, reproduce and continue on. And they wonder why the birth rates are so low. They wonder why men aren't asking women out anymore. They wonder why men just walk away and they wonder, and these women that go, I got all dressed up and prettied up and I went and not one person talked to me. This, this is why right here. Um, however, some online critics, uh, or how, however, some online, online claim the Starbucks staff had overreacted and bemoaned the current state of male-female relations. And some people wonder why so many young men have never approached a woman, uh, wrote singer Phil Labonte. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, last month, a, a study published by Date Psychology suggested nearly half of young men under 25 had never approached a woman in person, with most citing fear of rejection and fear of social consequences, exactly like you're seeing in this story. There's a men see this or they hear these stories, or they see somebody get blasted out, and they go, I'm not, it's like, it's already hard enough to gear yourself up for a lot of young men to get the bravado and the testicular fortitude to walk up to a woman to just say hi, and then to try to flirt and be funny and interesting enough where you can ask for her number, she gives it to you, and maybe you go on a date. A lot of people don't realize that this takes monumental, Herculean amounts of bravery from men, especially for guys that have been blown out a lot or that are not traditionally good looking, okay? Then they read these stories, they see the statistics, they see women calling men all these names and they say, it's, I, 
like it's already hard enough for me as it is. I don't want to put myself in an even more awkward situation. Can you imagine? Like I'm a comfortable, I'm a very comfortable person. I can walk up to anybody and talk to anything about anything just because that's the type of person I am. I've also probably collectively throughout my life have asked out like 5,000 women because you didn't have the internet to help you in the day. So you used to like, you put a hundred, you know, you'd throw a hundred balls out there and you hope one caught, right? So I'm very comfortable in my own skin. However, if I was just having a friendly interna interaction with a cashier or this girl that was standing by or I wanted to ask her out and now I realize everybody in the room is staring at me and judging me and maybe thinking I'm a creep, dude, that's very uncomfortable for anybody. So if this only continues the problem. Um, one ex-user commented, can't approach a woman in a coffee shop, creepy. Can't approach women at work, unprofessional. Can't approach women at the gym, distracting and creepy. Can't approach women at church, no single women. Can't approach women in public, with friends. What are men supposed to do? Author Rachel Wilson wrote, feminism has created mass hysteria that men are nothing but a, a violent machines and the only thing stopping them from enslaving the entire female sex is feminist activism and laws. It's insanity and it must stop. Women's studies departments should be shut down. But some said the negative reaction from angry men just proved their point. Men in the quotes giving us great examples of why the employees stepped in. Y'all are not entitled to speak to women simply because you think you can or perceive yourself as no harm. And that's the point right there. You're not entitled to talk to me. I was just being nice. No, you're not allowed to talk. I did not invite you to talk to me. And this continues on. And then what happens? Pretty soon, men just stop talking to women. Only the top 10 percenters. And as a matter of fact, the other story I have today, the other story I have today is about just the 10 percenters. And, and I'll be doing this in the next video. Men today feel like, you know, something, if this is how women think, I'm not entitled to speak to you, F off. You're, you're not entitled to my attention. And these women will continue to push this because they, they're a man that's really good looking and successful that drives a Bugatti and who's six foot three and muscular and, and looks like, I don't know, Henry Cavill. He's entitled to talk to her, but not you. You're beneath her. Why? Because she's been told she deserves better. And how are you to know that she sees you as beneath her? You don't. And so a lot of guys, I think even ones these girls would like to go out with and go on dates with, these guys also say, you know what? I bet I'm probably not even good enough for her. I'm only 5'10 and, you know, a seven as far as looks maybe, and I only make 50 grand a year. That's probably not good enough for these women. I'm going to stop talking to them too. So you want to know who's making it really hard for you women to find good men? You. You. You're the ones that are making it hard. And you know something? If you And I haven't gone through the comments here, but it looks like it's mostly dudes. Um, if, yeah, it looks like it's mostly dudes. You know who needs to push back on this, ladies? You do. Because if you don't, what's going gonna, what's gonna to happen is there's going to be more and more cases. There's going to be more, because it's already happening. There's more and more cases. A woman, a woman gets punched in the face by somebody on the street and collapses. Where are the men helping her? A woman gets with a struggle snuggle on a subway car and all the men do nothing. Where are all the men that help her? You don't want us to help you. You don't want us to talk to you. You don't want us to look at you. You see us as subhuman. You think that we're harmful. So, okay, I'm out. I'm going to look after myself. I don't have to look after women in society anymore because you told me you don't need me to. You told me you don't want me to. Or I do, and then because maybe, I don't know, I'm a white dude and it was a black dude, now I'm going to see, face maybe 10 years in prison for trying to do something right. You guys are the one that's doing this. And you know who will be fine out of all, the, all of this? The men. Yes, there are going to be men that are lonely. There are going to be men that wish they had a family and children and a wife. Instead, men are going to collectively chill online, play games, maybe meet up to go in my case, motorcycle riding, uh, shooting pool. Men will form community groups. That's what's great. But ironically, women also don't want men to have men's clubs. They, they think that's not inclusive and they want to 
push their way in there. So what it'll be, it'll be unofficial clubs. You know, me and the guys, uh, when I used to live in North Carolina, there was like me and like 15 or 20 other dudes. And every Sunday we would meet and it was a business that was owned by also a dude that rode motorcycle. We'd meet at his coffee shop. We, we'd all get there around, I don't know, eight, like eight thirty nine. We'd sip coffee and talk about motorcycles and life and work and things like that till, I don't know, 11, 1130. And then we'd all pile on our motorcycles. We'd go out for the afternoon, go for two, three hours worth of riding, sometimes four or five hours worth of riding. And he would close down his coffee shop on Sundays just so he could ride with us. So there was no women, no men, no one was inside because he closed the coffee shop. And then we guys would go back and he'd open the business again. And then if women wanted to come in, whatever, it didn't matter. It was, you know, it was a coffee shop. So, but all of us guys would have all these tables pushed into the far corner and we had our helmets hung all over the place and our jackets and we just, you know, we're shooting the breeze. That's what men will do. Women, yeah, they can do the same things, but the, the, they got the the baby cock clock. <laughs> they got the baby clock. They got the the um, you know the the timer that that uh, uh, you know the mother instinct that kicks in. And around thirty or thirty five, they start looking around for men. They're not going to find any men. Look around for women from the age of eighteen, well, sixteen until probably one day after they're gone from this earth. But men also will adapt and adjust and overcome because men are less social and men are more, you know, fine working with things. I know this for a fact. I'm the one that sits out here on land. There's no one else out here. I really don't get any human interaction and I'm fine. Just me and the dog. And, and when I get bored, I'm building something, I'm fixing something, I'm creating something. And then if I need a little bit of social interaction, I can go down to the local pub what I actually do is when I go grocery shopping, I chat with people because, again, I, I'm like kind of weird and I can talk to anyone about anything. Uh, and I, I just interact with people and am friendly with a half dozen people while I'm out doing my shopping. And I'm like, yeah, that's good enough. Like that fills my need for social interaction. Women are much different, much different. They hate just sitting. They don't have hobbies or they don't have nearly enough hobbies. They don't like to just tinker. They end up look, looking at social media all day and then going, I'm bored. And then they look for other women and other people to hang out with. That's how they socialize. Men can socialize with like a hammer. Like we're good with that stuff. So another example of why just men are pulling out, men are walking away, men have had enough, and it's because women tell them to. So ladies, you're going to get what you asked for. Congratulations. Uh, guys, if you're on YouTube, make sure to jump over on Locals. Uh, uh, all this content is up there for anybody that's a member. It's free. Um, or you can become a supporter today. It's like three bucks uh, a month. Uh, well, four bucks a month if you sign up for the year. And uh, it's like half the price of a crappy Starbucks coffee. I'd appreciate it if you join us over there today with a ton of other like-minded men. And we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.